Hello and welcome to the American Patriots channel. Today we're going to be talking about abortion. It turns out that abortion is a contentious subject because Americans are split right down the middle. Half are pro-choice and about half are pro-life. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here are the results of Gallup polls taken annually all the way back to 1996. And you can see that over the years the results are pretty darn even, with the most recent showing 49% pro-choice and 47% pro-life. It seems to me that it's kind of odd that Americans are so consistently and evenly split on a subject like abortion. And so I wondered, well, maybe it's because one side can't see the point of view of the other side. It reminds me of a story of when I was growing up. My family was on a car trip and we were on the interstate. And off to our right was an exit ramp and there was some cars getting off the highway. My mom looked over there and she said, look at that red car, that is a really sharp car. Well, my dad looked over to the right and he saw only a white car. So he said, that car's not red, it's white. And my mom said, no, it's red. And then my dad came back and said, no, I am sure that it's white. Well, I looked over there and I saw both cars and I thought, oh my gosh, they're getting into an argument about the color of cars. So I said, mom, dad, there was two cars on that exit ramp. There was a red one and there was a white one. So. Maybe it's something like that. We just can't see the other side. Well, today we're going to look at the entire spectrum of the abortion issue so that we can see it from all sides and maybe better understand it. So the first issue that we need to look at is when a person takes the life of another person, is it murder or is it justified? Well, we could answer that question using different measures, different yardsticks. We could look at it in terms of the legality of it, and we can look at it in terms of the morality of it. Here we can take a look at the morality and the legality of taking a human life. When it comes to warfare, it's pretty straightforward. It's considered both moral and legal. However, on the next three, the morality is not quite so straightforward. With capital punishment, there's not a consensus on whether it is moral. And with self-defense, it depends a lot on the circumstances. Well, actually, same with abortion. In terms of abortion, there are all kinds of circumstances for abortions. And we'll look at the details of that in just a little bit here. Now, in terms of suicide, it is not moral, although it is perfectly legal in the United States. And then, in terms of euthanasia, it's neither moral nor legal. There are a wide variety of circumstances that may cause a person to want to go and get an abortion. So, in order to fully understand the issues, we need to look at all of those circumstances. When considering the reasons and justifications for abortion, I've created a scale from more justifiable to less justifiable. So let's start with the most justifiable reason, saving the woman's life. If a woman has pre-existing conditions and doctors tell us that she's not likely to survive the childbirth, then unfortunately there's a decision that needs to be made to save the woman's life or to save the unborn baby's life. Next up on the list is fetal impairment, where doctors tell us that the baby is so impaired that it will not survive outside the womb. Well, in that case, it's safer to abort on the woman's health than it is to force her to carry it full term and have the baby. And then next up on the list is to preserve the woman's health. There again, if she has pre-existing conditions, which might cause some severe problems for her health-wise, then abortion could be considered. And then next on the list is preserving the woman's mental health. If there is a rape or incest, having that baby and forcing the woman to 
bear that child could have severe consequences on her mental health. Next on the list is again fetal impairment but in this case where the baby would have a reduced quality of life. Then next is socioeconomic reasons. Now we could consider for example the age and maturity of the woman. Let's say it's a 13 year old. Well having a child at that age is really quite risky and also could be considered the economic status of the family, how many children are in the family, and the health of the members of the family and whether there are economic strains there. And then further down on the list is abortion on request. And this would be in the case where the baby is not viable, meaning that if the baby were to be born right at that moment, it would not likely survive out on its own. And then at the bottom of the list, is abortion on request when the baby is viable, meaning that it would survive if it were born at that time. It is for those last two items, abortion on request, that the famous Roe v. Wade case comes in. What the court said is that during the first trimester, the first three months of pregnancy, the baby is not viable, can't survive outside the womb, and therefore the state has no compelling interest to restrict abortion. However, during the intermediate trimester, abortion becomes more risky and on a case-by-case -case basis the state may restrict abortion there. And then finally on the third trimester, the baby would survive outside the mother's womb and therefore the state can restrict abortion in that case. Now there again, our country is very divided on opinions about Roe v. Wade. So let's take a look at where the opinions fall. This graphic illustrates the opinions of Americans on Roe v. Wade and on abortion in general. Looking at the overall, the dark green shows that 21% of Americans believe Roe v. Wade should be expanded to the point where abortion is okay in any and all circumstances. 14% say keep Roe v. Wade but reduce some of the restrictions. 16% say keep it as is. 26% say keep Roe v. Wade and add more restrictions. And 13% say overturn it and make abortion illegal across the board. I'd like to address the opinions on the far ends of that spectrum, starting with the 13% that say that Roe v. Wade should be overturned and that abortion should be illegal under any and all circumstances. Let's start by looking at a situation where a woman has pre-existing conditions and is not likely to survive bearing a child. Are we to tell her that she cannot abort the pregnancy but instead must face the likelihood of death? Not only that, but if she already has children, are we to have those children grow up without a mother? Then when it comes to fetal impairment, if the baby would not survive once born, are we to force the mother to carry it full term and to bear it anyway, placing her at greater risk, or instead can we allow her to abort it, placing her at lower risk? So you can see that there are good reasons to allow abortion in certain cases. I would now like to address the opinion that 21% of Americans have that Roe v. Wade should be expanded to allow abortion under any and all circumstances. Let's take a look at abortion on request. Now, if the baby is not viable, let's make an assumption. Let's say that it is also not sentient, meaning that it cannot achieve consciousness and is not self-aware. Since it's not viable, 
it cannot survive on its own. It needs the life support of the mother. This situation is a lot like a person who is in a coma and on life support. If doctors tell us that they are certain that that person will fully recover, then is it appropriate to pull the plug on them, to cause them to die? It is certainly not. Same goes for the baby. And if that baby is viable and able to survive on its own, it certainly applies there too. Now there are those that are pro-choice. They are in favor of the right to choose what happens to their own body. And what I say is absolutely, 100%. You have the right to choose what happens to your own body. But I ask you to do this then. Go out and talk to your friends and talk to your family and ask them this question. If they had the choice, would they rather have been aborted while their mother was carrying them? I'll bet you that 99.99999% say, no, I would not want to be aborted. So therefore, they have the right to choose what happens to their own body too. And when it comes to a life or death choice, we know how they're going to choose. So a woman does have a right to choose up until the time that she becomes pregnant. If she does not want to become pregnant, she can use the tools of abstinence or contraception. But once pregnant, then it's the baby that has the choice and we know what that baby will say when it grows up to the point that we can ask the question. And not only that, but if you don't want the child, then there is a wonderful alternative. That alternative is adoption. There are many great and deserving couples out there that would love to have a child but can't. There's a lot more of that going on than you might think in fertility. And so adoption is a great option for those who don't want to raise a child. Maybe they're just not in a position to do so. So abortion on request is not moral. It is not ethical. But should it be legal? According to a study conducted worldwide in 2017, Countries that allow abortion without restriction saw an abortion rate of 34 per 1,000 women. That was contrasted with countries that do not allow abortion whatsoever or only allow it to save the woman's life. They saw an abortion rate of 37 per 1,000 women. So essentially about the same. What this tells us is that whether it's legal or not, women will seek abortions at about the same rate. Regardless of whether abortion is legal or illegal, the rate of abortion does not appear to be significantly affected. However, where abortion is illegal, women tend to seek out back alley unsafe abortions. It's estimated that 25 million women per year worldwide undergo unsafe abortions. So ultimately, I'll leave you with this thought. When a person chooses abortion, they must live with the knowledge for the rest of their life that they have chosen to take the life of their own child. In summary, what we learned today is that there are some valid reasons for abortion, such as to save the woman's life. On the other hand, abortion on request is immoral. And yet, if we make abortion on request illegal, it will drive women to seek out unsafe abortions. So should abortion on request be legal or illegal? That's a tough call. I'll leave that one with you. Well, 
That's all I have for today. I appreciate your support of the American Patriots channel, and I look forward to the next episode. I'll see you then.